Hello and welcome back to Mac Music and this the second instalment of the Open Stage Control tutorial from Scratch series where we're recreating the BCF 2000 control surface. So this is how we left things last time. We had the background and uh, we had all of the controls laid out uh, and created um, but not in the right position and the layout isn't responsive. The first thing I want to do, uh, and which I wasn't quite happy with last time, is to sort out the background image. And what we're going to do is use a new image that I downloaded, which looks like this. I edited it in GIMP and I removed, uh, rather inexpertly, the fader buttons from the image, ready to use as our new background. It's brighter, it's clearer, it's nicer, and I think it's going to look a lot better as the background to our new template. So to use this image, the first thing we need to do is to edit the template CSS file to reference the new background. We change the URL background path in the CSS file to be the path uh, to this new image file. And as before, we make sure that this new background image file is in that custom assets folder that we created last time. The other thing that we need to do is to scale this image correctly. The previous image was 1200 by 1200 pixels, which we forced down to 800 by 800. This one is actually 2000 by 1846. So uh, we need to divide 2000 by 800, which gives us two and a half. And then we next divide 1846 by 2.5, which gives us 738.4. So we round this down to 738, and then we update these dimensions of the background image in the CSS to be that number. Next, we need to go through each of our widgets that we've created so far and give them all a class name. This will help us with styling so that we can target each of the different types of controls and give them the appropriate look and feel that they need. I'll fast through, forward through all of this, but I've chosen some suitable class names for the widgets, like channel knob, channel button, channel fader, for, uh, for the, all the different controls, and we'll use these later on to target them in the CSS. Next, we're going to set up ourselves for the dynamic layout. And the way I've chosen to do this for this particular template is to use absolute positioning. So this is fixed positioning for each widget based on the background image, which is centered in the viewport. And we're going to make use of a thing called CSS variables. These are a handy feature of CSS3, and they allow us to store any value like we do in a variable, um, essentially a placeholder, which we can then reference in other parts of the CSS and the template JSON. So I'm going to set up some CSS variables. First, uh, one for the panel width, uh, from which I'm going to subtract uh, the width of the background image, and then I'm going to divide that by two, so I know the offset from the left-hand side of the screen to the left-hand side of the image. And then I'm going to do the same calculation from the top of the image, get the panel height, and then I'm going to take off the height of the image, and then divide that by two, so then I know where the top left of the image always is. So I can then use these fixed CSS variable values to then uh, lay out the rest of all of the widgets. To create these CSS variables, we select the panel widget CSS property and then start to create the new variables. The notation for these is dash dash and then the new variable name, panel width, which we're going to set to at this dot width in curly brackets. This here is the name for the or object uh, representation of the current object or widget, i.e. the container panel, and dot width is the property uh, which is the width of this panel. And that's going to give us the first variable that we want. Next I create a new temporary variable. Uh, I've got a backup of this step here. And we're going to create a, a variable called panel width margins. And I'm doing this in stages to make it clearer to understand. You could do all this in one line, but I'm going to spread it out to make it clearer to see. Uh, that's the whole of the panel width minus the width of the image, which we know is 800. And then the final part of this process is to create this left offset variable. So let's create a new variable definition called left offset and take the output of the previous variable and divide it by two. So to summarize, we started off with the panel width. We subtracted the width of the image, giving us the remaining space, and then we divided that by two. This gives us this first value that we need, which we have called left offset. One important thing to note which open stage control doesn't enable by default, is to set the layout mode to position absolute, uh, as we will be using absolute positions for all of the widgets to ensure that we have fixed positions for our controls that are fixed in the right place over the background image, whose position we know. Some people might say that fixed backgrounds and absolute positions in CSS layouts is not an ideal approach, but I think in this instance it works well. 
but I'm definitely keen to learn more about this. So if you know better and can tell me how to do it properly, then please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stick with this uh, because it works. As I've said, you know, I'm, I'm no design expert, but um, and it's, it, this is kind of working so far. I'm kind of reluctant to change it at the moment, but please do let me know in the comments if you've got a better solution. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the top offset uh, with the same sort of calculation. So I create a variable called panel height in exactly the same way as before. And we know the height of the panel, uh, this dot height. Uh, we take off the height of the image and then we divide the remaining space by two. And this gives us that fixed offset uh, from the top of the screen to the top of the image. So we're going to put that uh, in all of our controls. Now we simply need to start assigning positions to all of these widgets. Uh, we select the first knob widget, just move it roughly into position, and we want to resize this and make it a bit bigger so it looks right on this new updated background image that we're using. Once we've done that, uh, we just sort of check that it's in the right size and we're happy with it. And then we're going to set the top and the left property of this widget to auto. And this is important as we're going to be overriding these in the CSS property below. In that CSS property edit box, create two new entries, one for left and one for top. Uh, so left colon, top colon, and then we're going to use the CSS calc function. We need to calculate from our top and left offsets how far in and how far down we want this control to be placed. We reference our CSS variables using the var notation, using dash dash and the name of the variable. Uh, just make sure that's right uh, and then we add a fix offset and it's going to be a bit of a trial and error basically to, to get this in the right place we do the same for the top value that's var bracket and then we reference dash dash name which is top offset and then add that offset to get down to the correct location once we've done that and we've made a rough guess at what we think it should be we apply that by clicking save or tabbing out of the property edit control and once that's done i just double check that we've got the variable names correct Yes, uh, uh, it's not picking up for some reason. Okay, I just adjusted that again. Uh, I just double checked in the CSS variables in the panel widget and they weren't quite right. So now we've got it. Uh, you can see that the control is roughly in the right position. So I just need to fiddle around and get that right. One important note here for the CSS calc function, you need to include either a PX value or a percentage value if you're doing addition or subtraction. And you also definitely need to make sure that you have spaces in between the operand, like space plus space or space minus space to ensure that the calc function works. So that's roughly right, and I think we're happy with that. As an aside, I did try quite extensively the other day to wrap each vertical column of controls in a panel widget like I'm showing you now, and then it would be much easier because each knob, button, and fader control could have been fixed offset inside the panel widget, and all I'd have to do is duplicate the panel eight times across, and it would have been a lot easier with far fewer changes to make, but I couldn't get it to work in time. I think there's some weird vagaries with CSS and the clone widget styling in open stage control that I couldn't resolve. So what I did was go back to doing each widget individually and it might end up being a good idea in the end because we'll have complete control over where each widget goes. Once we've done this and we're happy with it, then it's just a question of going through each of the controls and manually setting the offset for top and left. What I'll do is I'll whiz through this now. Uh, quick note, just that we can copy and paste those two lines that we had before. Uh, into the existing CSS property, then all we have to do is just change those two offset numbers. Make sure we set auto for left and top because we're overriding them in the CSS property. One thing I was going to add is that I wanted to make sure that I could see where these control boundaries are uh, and, and make it a lot clearer. So by adding a bit of background styling to the controls, uh, you'll be able to spot the boundary of the widget and make sure that it's in the right place. So we're going to give all of the controls a fixed color background so it makes the layout easier and you can see what you're doing more clearly. If I just flick over to the CSS file and update that, then you can see here everything will have a nice green background. Let's quickly demonstrate that the two controls that we've edited so far are moving properly in sync with the background and that we can wiggle this around and they follow the track correctly. So that's all good. As I said, I just need to go through the other controls and do that. Uh, for the panel widget, we need to turn off scrolling in the editor, which I think is equivalent in CSS to setting overflow style to none. 
There's a dedicated setting for it in Open Stage Control, which stops scroll bars being displayed and causing an annoying bump in the layout of the controls. By turning off the scroll bars, they won't ever appear and upset our positioning of the controls when we do that resizing. So there we have it, the finished article so far with all of our controls in their fixed correct positions on the background image and they track nicely with the resizing of the window. The only thing I need to do is add a couple of extra styles to some of the widgets, so for the text panel to make sure that widget also appears with the, as the same as the others for laying out and I add its class into the CSS file and it gets a nice green background too. So that wraps up this part of the tutorial. We've successfully updated and improved our background image. We've laid out all of the controls, given them all their own CSS class names, and we're ready to do the custom styling next. You can see when we resize the window that everything lines up. In the next part, I'll take you through the complete styling process and how we get that overall visual look that I showed you previously. There's quite a few things to cover from that point of view, so I may split that into multiple parts to make it easier to digest. So I think we're in position for the next stage. If you have any questions, then please do, as usual, comment down below. It's been really useful to get the feedback from you guys. There's a few of you who consistently ask me questions and give me feedback, which I find very helpful, and I really do appreciate that a lot. Thank you. If you like what you see so far in this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please do click that subscribe button and hit the bell to be first to get notified when new content like this lands and to get the updates for the next parts of this tutorial series. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers. Bye.